In this video, you'll learn to solve equations which contain logarithms. So the key to solving an equation like this is really to get rid of the logarithm, but how you get rid of the logarithm will really depend on the structure of the equation and just upon the approach that you want to take. There's a few different ways you can go about these. But regardless of what approach you take and regardless of how the equation looks, there's a few rules or properties, sometimes called the laws of logarithms, that you need to learn which will be applicable in pretty much all of these questions. So we're going to start by looking at those and then we'll take those laws and we'll apply them to these and see the different ways that these equations can work out. First thing actually is just to think about what is a logarithm. So a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential. Exponential comes from the word exponent which just means power. So an exponential term, something like 2 to the power of 3, is just something that's got a power. So 2 to the power of 3, 2 cubed, that equals 8. That would be the exponential form of that expression. We want to be able to convert that into the log form. The log form just takes these numbers and kind of reorders them. Logs are less intuitive than exponentials. You've got to think of them as an exponential backwards. But this expression can be written as a log by writing log to base 2. So notice that the base on the logarithm and the base on the exponential are the same. That's always got to be true when you're converting. Log to base 2 of 8 equals 3. And that would be the log form. These are saying the same thing, just in a different way. So 2 to the power of 3 equals 8 is equivalent to log to base 2 of 8 equals 3. It's expressing the same connection between those three numbers. The key really is just noticing that the base is the same, and then these numbers kind of get flipped around when you turn it into either the log form or into the exponential. So these go both ways. You can turn the exponential form into the log form or the log form into the exponential form. Turning the log form into the exponential form, going this way, that's one of the ways, one of the tricks, techniques we're going to use to get rid of logarithms in our equations. That's not one of the rules of logarithms, that's just an idea, the kind of fundamental idea of what a logarithm is that can be helpful later on. The, the rules themselves tell us how to combine logarithms. So let's say we've got log to base a of b, and we're adding to that log to base a of c, so combining them by adding. In that scenario, we can make it into a single log, log to base A of the product BC. So fairly intuitive, if you're adding, you end up with a product. That's quite a common sort of combination of um, operations. So this comes from the indices rules where there's a connection between adding and a product. Similarly, if we take log to base A of B and we subtract from that log to base A of C, then we would get log to base A of the quotient uh, b over c. So again, fairly familiar-ish rule. If you're dividing, you subtract. Remember that all rules go both ways, left to right and right to left. So you might be using these by taking two logs and turning it into one, or you could start with one log and split it into two. Usually, though, we're going this way. Usually, you can see in these questions, we've all got multiple logs, and you're going to be combining those going this way into a single log. There's a few other rules. The other one that will be applicable to us is log to base a of b to the power of c. So if you've got a power on your log, you can bring, uh, sorry, a power on the number that's in the log, you can bring that power in front and make it c times log uh, to base a of b. So potentially we're going to use all of these rules in solving our equation. So we'll just park those there and refer to them as we work through the equations. Notice that they're all in similar but slightly different formats. So the main thing about these rules is the base numbers have got to stay the same. They've got to have the same base to be able to even use the rule. So that's fine there, that's fine. This is also fine, but notice there is a different base number over here. So you couldn't combine this term with one of these using one of these rules. So there's going to be a different approach to that one. Okay, so looking at this first equation, what can we do? Well, sometimes you've just got to think, right, which rule is applicable? This here is in the format to use this middle rule. So we could just go ahead and combine that into one single log. We've got the same base number, so we're, we're good to go. So this would be log to base uh, 4 of 12 over x. Just by using this rule, so dividing the 12 by the x, and that equals log to base 4 of 6. Now, if you find yourself in an equation in this scenario where you've got just one logarithm, and it's really important that it's only one log on either side, you can just cancel out the logs. So getting rid of the logs to leave you just 12 over x equals 6. Now, why are you allowed to do that? Well, if you imagine you had the equation 12 over x equals 6, 
With an equation, you're always allowed to do the same to both sides. So if you then introduce a log on that equation to make it log to base, well, anything, four in this case, of 12 over x, that must be equal to log to base four of six, just because all we've done is add a log on both sides. And if you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, it's still equal. So that rule goes both ways. You can go to there and you can also go back to there. So in this scenario, we drop the logs. Now that, so that is the, the technique we've used to get rid of the logarithm this time, just getting rid of them, just dropping them, canceling them, leaving us a little equation to solve to get the x value. So just quickly solving that, you can do it just by inspection. So x must equal two because 12 divided by two equals six. Generally in these questions, once you've gotten rid of the logarithm, the actual solving of the equation part, the end part is quite trivial. Usually, sometimes, not always. This one will be a little bit tougher. Right, let's take on this guy. So notice here the left-hand side is in the rule that ma or in the format that matches the first rule. The right-hand side is a different type of base number, but let's go ahead and start by using this uh, rule here and then we'll think about this term here. So we've got, a, uh, we're adding our two logs, so we've got the option to turn these into log to base four of the product of those terms. So it's this times this. There's different ways you could do that. You could just write them next to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply them together. So x times x gives you x squared. x times negative six gives you negative six x. I'm just gonna leave it like that, okay? So we'll just re write in the right-hand side again and just leave that for the time being. If we were to pull this term over, which might be tempting to combine the logs together, we're gonna reach the problem of having different base numbers. So. We, need, we can't basically do that. We need to take some different approach here. The approach we could take is just to think, well, what is log to base five of 25? Thinking about our sort of exponential form over here, this log form gets turned into an exponential form just by thinking, right, what power do I need to put on the base number two to make an eight? So the answer to that is three. So this really is just asking you the question, what power do I need to put on a five to make a 25, and that is, that is just two. So this is just equal to two. So in, in exponential form, that would be written as five to the power of two equals 25. We don't need to write that in this time, but we just by recognizing that as an exponential, that would be the question this is asking. What is that power? It has to be a two, so we're turning our equation into that. Let me just write that down. So that's gonna be log to base four, x squared minus six x equals two. Notice that what we're left with now matches exactly again this log form. So there's no more rules to use here. What we can do instead is just reorder this into an exponential. So the key is that the base stays the same. So the four is gonna be the base on the exponential. Whatever's here and here end up together. You just need to learn this rule, how to do this rearrangement. So it's gonna be four to the power of two equals x squared minus six x. Just developing this a little, four squared is 16. If I take that 16 to the other side of the equation, you would end up with an x squared minus six x, take away 16, equals zero. I've also spun it around to the left-hand side. This is now a quadratic equation, which we can solve by factorizing. This would factorize into the two brackets, x minus eight and x at plus two. And then we can just go ahead and solve that and we get solutions x equal negative two and x equals eight. So again, the end part should be fairly trivial. This time, this was a linear equation. This one was a quadratic. Quadratics are quite common, but the key was really well before that. The key was knowing what to do with the, the two logs and knowing how to handle this term. So again, like really comes down to knowing this fundamental connection between logs and exponentials and these rules. The actual equation part is fairly easy. Okay, so looking at this one, slightly different scenario. We've got two logs that do match up the middle rule, and then we've got just a numerical term on the right-hand side. So we'll need to think about what we're gonna do this time, but we will start by combining our logs together. So this would be log to base two of, put it in a bracket, seven x minus two over three. So making that quotient equals five. So what are we gonna do now? Well. Again, even though this looks a little ugly and we've got just a number over here, this again matches this correct sort of format for turning it into an exponential. So what we would do here is just say, right, well, two is the base number. We're gonna put the power of five on that and that equals seven X minus two 
over 3. That's just that rearrangement again that you need to learn. So that rearrangement is super important in these questions. The other way you can think of it is you can, and some teachers will teach this method instead, turn the 5 into a log to base 2 term by making it log to base 2 of 5 um, to the power of, oh sorry, that should have been log to base 2 of 2 to the power of 5. Personally I find this far more complicated and a bit of an overworking, but the reason why 5 and log to base 2 of 2 to the 5 are the same is because of this third rule which we've not used yet. It says you can bring the power in front. If you bring the power in front there you would end up with 5 log to base 2 of 2. Log to base 2 of 2 is just 1 because you need to put a power of 1 on a 2 to make a 2. So this is effectively just saying 5 times 1 which is 5. So in other words, that term is a rearrangement of just the number 5. Some teachers will now say, right, now just drop the logarithms, which will leave you with the fraction equals um, the 5, sorry, the 2 to the 5, which is what we've ended up with anyway. I think that's an overworking. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this method. I would just say learn how to make the rearrangement from here to here, which takes you straight to this without any of this nonsense going on up here. So just taking this forward, we've got 7x minus 2 over 3 equals 2 to the power of 5. So counting 2s on your fingers if you like, that would give you 32. Now we've just got a linear equation. Okay, it's got a fraction in it, but it's just a linear equation. Just going to have one solution. We're going to solve it by getting rid of the fraction. So multiplying both sides by 3. That would give us 7x minus 2 equals 96, if my counting is correct given 7x equals 90, uh, 98. And so I was just trying to check in my mind there that that final number is going to divide. Always a good sign if the final number divides and a bad sign if it doesn't. So 10 times 7 is 70. That would leave us 28. 7 goes into 28 four times. So the final answer would be uh, 14. If you do all of this work and you get to a number that doesn't divide and it's not going to give you a whole number at the end, it could be correct, but usually it's going to be wrong. So it's a little bit suspect. You should check that out and make sure you've not made a mistake. So conversely, if you work through all of that and you get a nice whole number at the end, it's pretty much validation you've done it correctly. Okay, so a few different approaches there. Dropping the logarithm, rearranging the logarithm into an exponential. This is probably the most common technique. But before we could do any of that in all three of these examples, we had to use these rules, particularly the first two rules. The third rule tends to be less applicable. Knowing how to combine them using the first two rules is really the key to unlocking these equations with logarithms. Actually solving the equation part in the end should be fairly easy. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, just leave them in the box below.